Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about comparing two Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, a Celestron and a Mead. Well, I wouldn't necessarily want to buy it. I can't really justify buying a new telescope, but will he rent it to me for two weeks? A hundred dollars? Okay. All right, well, send me his address and his phone number and I'll send him a hundred dollars. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. I'm gonna rent a Celestron telescope. I'm on my way to Whitney's house to get a telescope. Hi, are you Whitney? Yes, who are you? I'm Sula. I'm here to pick up Julio's telescope. I, I zelled him. Did he get it? Oh, I see. I see. I think so. Yes. Uh, do you have the telescope? Yes, it is here. Okay, great. I brought this to okay. get it. All right. Just wait until I get things ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, thanks for putting it out here for me. Wow. It, it looks like... It looks brand new. It looks like Julio hardly used it. He only used it once. He only used it once? Why? Um, he did not like it. It's too much room and too much time to put it together. Okay, well, wow, it looks brand new. Well, well, thank you very much. I'm just going to put it on this dolly then and take it. Thank you. You're welcome. Schmidt Casgrain is a type of catadioptric telescope that uses both lenses and mirrors. Schmidt Casgrains are reflecting telescopes, but they also have a corrector lens to eliminate aberrations caused by the primary mirror. The incoming light passes through the Schmidt corrector lens or corrector plate at the front of the telescope and the light is then reflected from a concave primary mirror at the back of the telescope which focuses the light to the front of the telescope tube where it's reflected again by a smaller convex secondary mirror and then the light travels through a hole in the primary mirror at the rear of the telescope where the eyepiece is placed. By folding the light in this manner, a schmidt cassegrain telescope can be made much smaller and compact than a reflector or a refractor. And that's why they're very popular telescopes. Mead and Celestron, the two biggest names in schmidt cassegrain telescopes, fierce competitors and bitter rivals for years. Mead was founded in 1972 by John Diebel after graduating with a doctorate in electronic engineering from California Institute of Technology. Mead introduced their first Schmidt Cassegrain telescope in 1980 with an 8-inch model with a worm drive. In 1992, Mead introduced the LX200 series of Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. And 10 years later, in 2002, Mead introduced the UHTC, Ultra High Transmission Coatings. Long before Mead introduced its 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain, the Celestron's founder, Tom Johnson, also of California, came up with a way to mass produce the corrector plate in the late 60s by using a vacuum to pull the master blocks into a pre shaped curved mold. Celestron began selling 6, 8, 10, 12, and even 22-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. In 1970, Celestron introduced the now famous orange tube C8, or 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain. In 1980, Celestron introduced the Starbright XLT coating for high transmission. 
but in 1997, Celestron was acquired by Tasco, and three years later, in 2000, Celestron introduced the Edge HD flat field Schmidt Cassegrain that eliminated coma. Despite this major milestone for Celestron, Tasco drove the company into the ground and the company ended up filing for bankruptcy when Tasco went out of business in 2001. Also in that year, Mead and Celestron sued each other for patent infringement. In 2005, Celestron was acquired by Sinta Technology of Taiwan. They manufacture their telescopes in China. In 2013, Mead was having problems of its own and was acquired by Ningbo Sunny, a Chinese company. Although Mead had built a factory to manufacture their telescopes in Tijuana, Mexico in 1999, manufacturing was moved to China when Mead was acquired by Ningbo Sunny. In November 2017, Orion sued Ningbo Sunny and Sinta Technology, the parent company of Celestron, for price fixing. Celestron was smart. They settled out of court. But Mead was dumb. <laughs> or Ningbo Sunny went to trial and they lost. And they were ordered to pay Orion millions of dollars. Although that case is over, there is a class action lawsuit around the same grounds against Ningbo, Sunny, and Sinta Technology, the parent company of Celestron, for price fixing and is currently pending in California. And Orion acquired Mead and continued production of their Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes at the Mead plant in Mexico. So as of now, the time I'm filming this, 2023, Orion owns Mead and Sinta Technology of Taiwan owns Celestron and manufactures their telescopes at the Sinta factory in China. So that's a brief history of Mead and Celestron, the two chief rivals in the schmidt cassegrain telescope market. But which one is better? I'm sure this has been mulled over, discussed, and debated for years, for as long as these two giants have been making schmidt cassegrain telescopes and I'm sure everyone has their opinion. People have their loyalties and opinions. Terence Dickinson and Alan Dyer, in their book, Backyard Astronomer's Guide, say that these two telescopes are very comparable and pretty, pretty uh, even, though Dickinson and Dyer tipped the scale slightly toward Celestron because they said that it had better focusing, calling Mead's focusing greasy. And now at the risk of receiving hate mail, I'm dipping my toes and jumping into the foray. And I'm doing something I've wanted to do for years, and that is to have a head-to-head -head comparison of what I believe are comparable schmidt cassegrain telescopes, both eight inches, one a Mead LX85 8 inch and the other a Celestron Next Star 8SE. I bought the Mead LX85 I think last year and I bought it OTA, optical tube only, except it came with a Vixen dovetail and I usually put it on a, a go to mount. Right now it's just on an Altaz uh, mount and and it costs $1,699, and it came with one 26 millimeter superplossal, an 8x50 finder scope, and a star diagonal. This telescope comes as a package on this single fork arm mount, go to mount, and the optics come with Celestron's Starbright XLT coatings uh, for high transmission, but not with the aplanatic flat field design found on their. HD edge line of Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. The Next Star 8SE retails for about $1,299, but apparently the SE is Celestron's base model Schmidt Cassegrain. They also have the Evolution Edge HD, which Celestron markets as an aplomatic coma free model. That one is much more expensive, retailing at nearly $3,000. The SE model comes with the red dot finder, one 25 millimeter plossal, a star diagonal, a little button level, and the go-to Altaz mount and this lightweight tripod. My Mead LX85 
comes with Meade's high transmission coatings, the UHTC and with the ACF, Advanced Coma Free Optics. But I believe the LX85 is the Meade base model in the Schmidt Cassegrain line of telescopes. So from what I can tell, even though the Meade costs $400 more and did not come with a mount, the two telescopes, I believe optically anyway, should be comparable. And now we're going to find out. I'm going to check whether the two telescopes came collimated. I'm going to perform a star test on the optics and see if there's any aberrations. And then I'm going to compare the viewing on planets, close double stars, deep sky object or two, and star clusters to see if I can resolve individual stars. And I'll check for any image shifting, a common problem on schmidt cassegrain style telescopes where the object goes out of focus when you move to a new object because the focuser is at the back of the telescope and it moves the entire primary mirror when focusing. I'll also check for any coma or aberrations and see if the focusing feels greasy <laughs> or not. So after I'm finished with the testing, I'll give you my assessment of these two 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. Celestron came out with the Nexstar 8 SE in 2000, so it's been on the market for years. It was one of the first computerized uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, and this one is computerized. It comes with a single fork arm, uh, but mostly I wanted to compare the optics. Right now they're both pointed at Jupiter and they both look great, but planets are very much um, susceptible to the seeing conditions, so it's not the best way to compare optics. Uh, in a minute I'm going to point it to a star and defocus and see if it came factory collimated because <laughs> Jupiter was my first light. It took me a while to star align, mostly because I was incredulous that you didn't even have to say what the bright star was you were aligning with and two of the things I chose were planets but uh, incredibly it, it did star align and so now uh, after Jupiter which they they both they look about the same in both telescopes um, I'm going to point at some deep sky objects and uh, see how they compare now this telescope I bought OTA which means I just got the optical tube and I have it on a Sirius EQG mount um, because I had to put it on something and this is on a single fork mount so it's an alt as mount but I'm not comparing the electronics I'm going to be comparing the optics so let's get started <laughs> I asked the telescope to go to Polaris so that I could check the collimation and it was off by a mile. I'm not sure why I said I wasn't going to talk about the electronics, but I thought I should point that out. Anyway, I got it in there and it came with a 25 millimeter eyepiece and I defocused and it seemed to be well collimated. I put in this 10 millimeter eyepiece and defocused and still seemed well collimated so both telescopes came from the factory well collimated so now let's uh, point both telescopes at a deep sky object and see how they compare Polaris is a double star by the way and I could clearly see the double star so that was good but unfortunately there's something wrong with the electronics I asked it to go to Deneb before I go to my deep sky object because it might not be in there and it was way off so um, I'm going to have to look into why it's so off uh, so I'll have to resume this later but so far I think the optics are uh, pretty nice I don't know why it only came with one eyepiece though that's kind of cheap <laughs> it should come with two but I'll be back later. Okay, right now I have both telescopes on Saturn and looks pretty good in both. I'm gonna go get a 10 millimeter eyepiece and I'm gonna use the same eyepiece in both telescopes and try to compare. Okay, Saturn looked pretty clear with the little 25 millimeter eyepiece that this telescope came with. Now I'm gonna put in this 10 millimeter and see how it looks. 
I can see four of Saturn's moons. Looks pretty darn good. This single fork arm, it, it, it's not very stable, so you, you can't you can't touch it, and you have to let it calm down. But Saturn looks very sharp, and here, okay. And so now I'm gonna look at it and the bead eight inch. Okay, Saturn looks really sharp and clear in here. It's tiny though, because I have a 36 millimeter eyepiece on here. But I'm gonna uh, use the 25 millimeter on both when I get to the other objects. But now I'm putting the 10 millimeter on Saturn. This amount is a lot more stable, of course. Oh my God. Oh my God, it looks wonderful. Wow, it looks really sharp and clear. It looks very sharp and very clear. Let me go back to the Celestron and look at it again. I'm gonna give a slight edge to the Mead telescope on Saturn. It just looked a little bit sharper. It could be because the, the Celestron's on that wobbly single fork arm, although I did let it calm down, but it just looked a tad sharper to me. I could put a camera on both of these, but I'm not sure if that would really reveal much, but I'll try that later. But next, we're going to go to a tight double star, <laughs> Epsilon Lyrae. And let me get that in both telescopes, and then I'll compare. Before giving up completely on this telescope, I took it off that terrible single fork arm mount, which I'm not impressed with at all. And I put it on my Lasmandi, which is an incredibly accurate mount. It's the best mount I own, except it weighs so much. But anyway, I put the Celestron on the Lasmandi mount and pointed it to Epsilon Lyrae 1 and 2, and I was able to split both of them. So I actually think the optics on this telescope are, are pretty good, um, but the mount, no. <laughs> so I'll be back to conclude my comparison. As far as the design, they're both 8 inch aperture and about the same focal length. The Mead weighs a little bit less than the Celestron and they one of them was one inch smaller in circumference um, but other than that they were pretty much the same except one thing that I really didn't like about the Celestron is that it doesn't come with a handle and it's very awkward putting this telescope on this fork with no handle and the mead came with a handle and I really like that and also I just think that this flimsy mount is not adequate for an 8 inch telescope. Hello again I'm finished with my testing of these two Schmidt cast grain telescopes and I'm ready to give my final assessment. Both telescopes came well collimated from the factory. I performed some star test and I didn't note any kind of aberrations or astigmatism in either one except the Celestron exhibited some slight coma at the extreme edge of the field of view whereas the Mead had no coma whatsoever. Um, I moved the telescopes around to see if there was any image shifting and there was image shifting in both telescopes which is when you move the telescope to another object it's out of focus. And that is just a function of the design of the schmidt cassegrain telescope because the focuser moves the entire primary mirror. I would say, however, that the Mead had a little bit worse image shifting than the Celestron did, but they both had it. I looked at two planets with both telescopes. I looked at Saturn and Jupiter. I thought Saturn looked better in the Mead. Uh, 
could be a function of the seeing though because how well you see a planet is very much a function of the seeing but I looked at Jupiter in both telescopes on another night and it looked about the same in both telescopes so I would get the planets a slight edge to the mean. I looked at two tight double stars Epsilon 1 and Epsilon 2 Lyrae in Lyra de Harp uh, they're 2.5 arc seconds apart, so pretty tight, and I was able to split both double stars with both telescopes. I also looked at some deep sky objects. I looked at NGC 6888, the Crescent Nebula in Cygnus, and it's a bright nebula, and I, I could see it, and I could see it well in both telescopes, and it, it was about the same. I also looked at part of the Veil Nebula, NGC 6960, and it looked approximately the same. Both telescopes benefited from a UHC filter. And so I would say overall that both telescopes optically perform pretty similarly. I would give a slight edge to the mead. I did not think that the focusing was greasy. I think it focuses fine. They both do. I just felt that the mead was a little bit sharper, which it should be. This telescope costs a lot more. This telescope was $1,699 for OTA, whereas the Nexstar 8 SE is $1,299, and it comes with this mount. But I think the reason that I give the slight edge to the mead might have something to do with the mount, which I was hoping to just compare to optics, but it comes as a package, so I can't help but tell you about the mount. I don't like the mount. I think it's wrong for a telescope company to sell you electronics that don't come with a power cable. So this runs off eight batteries, but batteries don't do well in cold weather. So sometimes you wanna use a power cable, but you have to buy it separately. Secondly, you cannot move this mount manually. And I think that's a design flaw. Just to get it in this position, <laughs> when all I'm going to do is tell you about the telescope, I had to go get a power source and turn it on and move it with the hand controller. I didn't like that. But the main thing I don't like about it is I, I aligned it two, three times and it was still terribly inaccurate. I can see why Julio said it was hard to set up. Maybe what he meant was he couldn't find anything because it was so inaccurate. And I don't know why, but that, that's a major problem. I, I had to eventually take it off and put it on my Laz Mandy to, to look at the double stars, but uh, it, it is, just comes as a package, so I had to take that into account. But the main thing wrong with it also is that this tripod, yes, it's very lightweight, that's nice, but it's very wobbly. Any, you just touch it, any movement whatsoever makes the telescope shake and wobble and you have to wait for it to calm down. So that is a major flaw to me. And I think if you could just buy this telescope OTA, it'd be a lot better uh, because optically it's performed very well. I think both of the telescopes are very comparable. I'm giving the slight edge though to the Mead because it just seemed a little bit sharper to me. Yes, I've had it longer uh, than this one, but uh, just based on my testing, that's my conclusion. <laughs> so that's it for now. Hope you found this useful. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. No hate mail.